Hello, you amazing little marketing bees. You're tuned into episode 44 of the Marketing Buzzword Podcast. This is the Marketing Buzzword Podcast, the podcast where we dissect the world's most common marketing buzzwords. Hold on tight. We are about to fly around the beehive to see the latest buzzwords that stuck to the marketing bees. Hello and welcome to the bite-sized section of the Marketing Buzzword podcast and project, aptly named Bite Size Buzzword. I'm Ben Roberts and in these bite-sized snackable episodes, I'm going to help you dive deeper into what a specific marketing buzzword actually means, help you decide whether it is or isn't important for your business, and if it is, how you can incorporate that buzzword into your marketing strategy. And this week, we're going to look at the marketing buzzword conversion rate optimization, otherwise known as CRO, and why it's important and why there is such an emphasis on it. And just before I do that, though, I need to remind you that the crowdfunding campaign for the new book, Marketing Buzzword to Marketing Authority, is still live. We've got just under two weeks now to get your pre-orders in, just Just literally type it on Google, marketing buzzword to marketing authority, you'll find the crowdfunding page. I'll put the link, though, in the show notes anyway. But please, if you haven't already supported this, I'd absolutely love it if you could. I think at the time of recording this, maybe 43 pre-orders, and the aim is to get 100. That's literally the dream is to get 100. So please, if you're listening to this, I know there are so many of you listening to this, and I know so many of you haven't bought it yet. But if you you are interested, please do pre-order a copy of the book. Now, in this episode, we are then going to discover what CRO actually means, what are these sort of common errors made, and then we're going to really dive into best practices and how you implement conversion rate optimization. So, what is it? Now, essentially, it's the art and maybe the science of trying to get people to complete a desired action on your website. Okay, it doesn't matter what that necessarily is, but it's basically it's how you actually get people to complete a desired action. Now that could be moving from one stage of a funnel to another stage. For you, that could be a conversion, but most people generally would conv- would actually look at trying to get the end goal of getting a customer. Now, isn't the same for absolutely everyone? Every business is slightly different, and you want to measure the conversion at different points because you obviously want to make sure that you're you're converting effectively at all stages of the funnel. But generally, a lot of people would refer it to as that final conversion where you actually end in a sale. And essentially, involves everything from capturing attention and getting people onto your website to the end of purchase. It should take into account all those things because ultimately, if you aren't getting people to convert higher up in your funnel, you're going to struggle to get people to convert later on. And it takes into account... Micro changes. Now, more people, when you're thinking about conversion rate optimization, you can understand, okay, oh, you need a landing page, you need this, and you just need, need, need certain big things. But actually, the micro changes are, are really, really important. So things like button shape, um, button color, all this stuff is, is really, really important. And it isn't always about the sale. So although it's... It's something that is perceived as being really important. It isn't always about it. Could be data capture, could be form filling, depending on your business. So don't think of conversion optimization saying, ah, I don't necessarily want people to buy straight away. That's fine. If that's not your goal, your goal is to actually capture data. So, for example, you have some downloadable content and you want people just to download that content. That is your conversion goal. Now, there are a number of key errors I see being made with conversion rate. Now this isn't necessarily gospel, I'm sure there are other things that people can think of. But these are some of the things that I'm seeing. And it's it's not only about immediate sales. Now the conversion rate optimization is it's it that is crucial that you are creating a desired outcome. But also you need to think longer term in terms of how you're gonna come back, how you're gonna get people to come back. Because ultimately if you get people to come back then there are going to be a slightly warmer lead than they were if they came in cold so actually you're able to improve your conversion rates by making sure that after that post sale that post that first sale or post that download whatever it post that form fill 
that you find a way of being able to get those people back because then you can actually then then sell to them now you may have got them to do that first bit of conversion which is download your content the next part is actually to make them have a sale so actually you need to think more long term a lot of people just think about getting people to take that one that first desired action and don't actually then go well, what is the actual end goal where, where do i actually want them to go next do i want them to come back do i want them to as a, as part of a funnel stage as if you think of it as a funnel stage is actually downloading the bit of content is that just stage one and not actually the final conversion so think about the longer term the entire customer journey where are they starting cold and ultimately where are they getting to and then actually find different conversion points along the way and also i think the biggest thing i've seen is that less really is more um remove distractions like is a, I, I was looking at a glarish automotive website recently from a car dealer and there's this lime green there was flashing stuff there's an autoplay video i had no idea where i was looking and actually less is more Try and remove, if you have a single goal, a single focus on your page, your website, you want people to perform a certain action, you need to be able to just actually surround it with less. So the emphasis on the conversion point. Even little things like if you have two different types of call to actions on a page, so one is actually like a desire, like a contact us or a have a demo make that a bold color where a bold button so it's like it's, it stands on your face and if it's something that's like oh maybe you want to learn a bit more you just do that with a border and it has the same color background as whatever the background color is that way it's still shown as a button but it's less like it's less sort of in your face sort of saying i really need you to click on this button or you really want to click on this button and i think the final area that i see all the time is about testing you need to always test it's not just about testing for short periods it's not about going with your gut going oh i just like that color i think that's going to be great or oh this is a part of our palette so we have to only use this always test read to get other ideas but don't necessarily base your entire conversion rate optimization strategy upon another website because every single website is different absolutely every single website is different there is some incredible best practices out there which i'm going to try and go through but not all of them will work for you not all of them are going to be perfect i've had to discover this in my business myself where people have said that you need to write more stories and you need to be sort of selling the dream to them when they come on the website now i can understand that if you've got a you're operating in a highly competitive environment where people are just sort of generally browsing and you want to make sure that you're compelling them but for the business that i work in at talkative people are already looking for stuff. so for example they look for i want a co-browsing solution for my website so they don't and that's literally when the biggest terms that comes to us or and things like that which they're actually looking for more detail and tangible facts if we start going with stories we found actually that that didn't convert as well for us so it's it is all down to perception but there are a couple of things which i'm going to now in this next section look at the best practices and how, how you can potentially convert better so i said there are no no one size fits all but there are trends and evidence for certain practices and testing testing things like heat maps surveys yes yeah, surveys i can hear you ah but that's so disruptive it is disruptive but again it all depends upon the website so for example the bbc here in the uk they do surveys on there now i'm not going to stop using the bbc website because they put up a survey but other i may stop using other websites if they put up a survey just because of the nature of the beast a b tests obviously a really common way of testing and session recordings now those four heat map surveys a b tests session recordings are pretty much my four go-to sort of tools or analysis and things i've also got google analytics as well which i'll talk about a little bit later but really, if you want to convert better, you need to be having a look at some of those to sort of see what, what on earth's going on in there. Because they'll be able to give you a bit more insight. Because it's like, if you just look at it and you say, okay, X amount of people have converted, 
you don't know how much they've scrolled on your website. You don't know how really long, whether people were taking, spent half their time just not really understanding what they were doing, whether it was reading. It's really important that you actually try and give as, get as much detail, as much evidence as possible. And that's how you then justify any of the changes that you'll make later on. You have to have to test and analyze. Now, something else that I've seen and I think is an amazing best practice is the creation of urgency. So, countdown timers. I think, see, a lot of conferences are brilliant for this. Sales. Actually having countdown timers on websites or this sale only lasts till here. It creates urgency because if you know that after this date you are not going to be able to get it for this price again or no, you're not be able to get this offer, particular offer again, it's for a limited time. L- limited, uh, limiting stuff doesn't mean you're not going to sell more. In fact, it means the complete opposite. You create urgency. You mean people actually t- take action because people take action on something that they think that they have a thing. Think about in work where you've got a deadline. You're more likely to get if you have a deadline you're going to get it done if someone doesn't give you a deadline it would be nice if you did this you're probably not going to get it done as quickly think about it in that perspective now something else that is a bit of a maybe slightly more controversial is using first person CTAs we found that that's something that works really well for us and it's stuff that I found a lot of evidence online to say that first person CTAs work so for example on the button it says I want to know more or I want to do this, I want to speak to someone, I want a demo, whatever it is. Now, we found that that works. It may not work for you. However, there is a lot of evidence out there that says that it can convert better because it puts, as a as a user is reading a website, it's already in the head going, oh, I want to do that. So something like that, think about first-person CTAs. Social proof. Social proof is amazing. Case studies, reviews. Get, um, if you've got a if you've got products on your website, you sell you sell goods you sell goods. Can you sort of in, uh, integrate Instagram or user photos in there and credit them? Things like that give actual proof that other people have bought them, other people use, and other people like no trust your brand, trust their product your products. Amazing. It's one of those things that people go, oh, it, is it a bit fluffy adding Instagram photos in there? Oh, it seems like a lot of waste no not at all the more social proof you can put in there because people like to know that other people are buying it and getting satisfaction from it because it helps alleviate any reservations they have if they currently if they have reservations and they're not going to buy from you user generated content a little bit like social proof if you can get people to write reviews on your website off your website on any other platforms on forums absolutely incredible get your users to, to contribute to your website so not even necessarily just adding photos into a, a customer gallery if you are maybe even add them into your your main product gallery things like that anything that you can get where it provides proof and evidence your users will absolutely love you for it now something else I mentioned a little bit earlier was clarity what will the user get? So, in terms of if they click on this button, what am I expecting them to do, and what are they expected to do? So, for example, if you say I want to contact someone, it's quite clear that they, if they click on that button, they are going. They want. They are going to speak to someone or get the process for speaking to someone. If you go, click here. What is the actual desired outcome? Are they downloading something? Are they contacting someone? Are they buying it? You be specific, be clear, add clarity to it. What do you expect the user to do? What do you what What are they going to get out of it? I mentioned earlier as well. Sometimes minimal is better. It's not maybe not work on all pages, and sometimes you have to be smart about this, and you have to analyze this stuff. But if you, on landing page especially, if you remove all distractions, so for example, you get rid, get rid of the, the main uh, header menu, 
you get rid of anything else. So actually the whole focus is on a single call to action because otherwise there's places that other people can be taken off the website. So you don't want to take them off the website or take them to other page on the website. You've brought them to that specific landing page because you want them to do a specific action. Focus all your efforts, remove all distractions and focus on that single specific action. And also, even if it's not on a landing page and it's something that you just think, I need to improve my conversion rates, think about actually, is your call to action button clear in terms of, does it have enough white space or space around it? So therefore, the eye is drawn to that single button. If it's your button is in the middle of a, a section where there is loads of other pictures, imagery, words, whatever it is, videos, it's probably not going to stand out. You need to make it stand out to put it in the middle or somewhere in line with your website. Add lots of padding so the eye is drawn to that single point of focus. That's really important. And then sort of finally then we want to look at actually how would you implement it? Google Analytics is one of your best friends. How are people moving through your site? So have goal conversions. Use tools like Hotjar. Look where the people where people are leaving your website or which, which parts of your website convert better or perform better. Put that data together and find the why. Now each of these tools individually may not be able to necessarily give you the why, but if you start at putting all that stuff together, you'll start understanding that certain pages are seem to be converting better than others and that's really important. So for example, if you've got four products or like we have to talk to, if you've got four products, I can see which of our products seem to be converting better over what period. Now, that is that is invaluable data to help you improve those pages. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you got a lot out of this episode, and I really enjoyed sharing it with you. Please come back on Monday, where I have another guest episode that I'm really excited about. and looking at branding and social media with Hong Kong Airways. It's really so cool. And please let me know, drop me an email if you would like me to cover any other buzzwords. And please do get involved with the crowdfunding campaign for the new book. Thank you very much and I'll see you on Monday. This podcast is part of the You Are The Media Network.